My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. A speech that laid the groundwork for years of war and strife. The Iraq war was described as a necessary war, one that would ensure the stability of that region and the world. Numerous human sources tell us that the Iraqis are moving not just documents and hard drives, but weapons of mass destruction to keep them from being found by inspectors. We know they have weapons of mass destruction. We know they have active programs. There, there isn't any debate about it. The U.S. promised to unseat a rogue leader, find and obtain all weapons of mass destruction, and rebuild a broken nation. Ten years later, only one of those promises was kept. A war to end the alleged deceptions of Saddam Hussein's regime muddied the reputation of the world's most powerful nation. The Iraq war was supposed to be a lot of things, cost-effective for one. Office of Management and Budget estimated it would be something under $50 billion. How Outside much estimates say up to $300 billion. Ugh, baloney. But there was more meat to that argument than economists and the Bush administration thought. The latest estimates put the total cost of the Iraq war at $823 billion, with reconstruction efforts in the country totaling over $300 billion. But it wasn't only the financial costs the Bush administration underestimated. It was also the human toll. Some of the higher-end predictions that we have been hearing recently, such as the notion that it will take several hundred thousand U.S. troops to provide stability in post-Saddam Iraq, are wildly off the mark. A decade later, with 4,484 American military personnel dead, more than 32,000 physically injured, and tens of thousands of others suffering the mental impacts of the Iraq War, those predictions proved to be right on point. As for the damage this war caused the Iraqi and American people? Do you think the American people are prepared for a long, costly, and bloody battle with significant American casualties? Well, I don't, I don't think it's likely to unfold that way, Tim, because I really do believe we will be greeted as liberators. While anywhere from 125,000 to 1 million Rockies died, the U.S. went into recession that cost millions of families their jobs and homes, and the notion of a noble nation riding in on white stallions to liberate a depressed people turned out to be smoke and mirrors. So 10 years later, with the Iraq War behind us, did the U.S. earn anything from this unpopular war? We see that Iraq changed Washington as much as Washington changed Iraq. You see how much there's concerns. You see, you see the debt. You see, you see the, the scare of being involved now in Syria and, 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 and elsewhere in the world. You see the conservative party or the conservative movement in general is much more weaker. If nothing else the Bush administration said was true about the war in Iraq, Perhaps his official declaration of war was a prelude to what was really to come. A campaign on the harsh terrain of a nation as large as California could be longer and more difficult than some predict. However, not even President Bush could predict how long or how expensive this war would really be. In Washington, Megan Lopez, RT.